All right, fam. So I discussed the effects of wheat, the many effects of wheat in specific detail in a previous video. Here's the video right here. And I'll put a link at the bottom so that you can go to the video and find out everything that uh, I discussed with Herbis Kareem about wheat and the many, many uh, ways that it affects the body. Now, I understood then how wheat basically reprograms the cells, but I didn't get into the science of exactly how, or I couldn't find the science to show how it exactly it infiltrates the cells. Okay, and I found that information here so that you can see it for yourself directly on how wheat basically reprograms the cells. It almost acts like a virus, rather I should say toxins on the wheat that grow in the wheat. But I'm not so sure that the toxins um, grow anywhere else. I don't I don't see any data that shows that the toxins would be anywhere else other than wheat. Okay. Anyway, that's another story on, you know, my theory on why these specific toxins uh, proliferate in wheat. I'm not so sure that is extremely accidental, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So, again, if you watch the video, the previous video that I have linked below, you'll understand the concerns with wheat. But we're going to talk about what's called xeralanone. Okay. All right. And we're going to read here. Okay. Xeralanone, also known as RAL and F2 mycotoxin, is a potent estrogenic metabolite. Okay. I want you to take note of those words. Estrogenic metabolite produced by some fusarium and gabrella species particularly is produced by fusarium graminarium fusarium comorium fusarium cerealis fusarium equiseti fusarium reticulocytes or reticulo leoci or leo leoides and fusarium incarnatum several reading right here several fusarium species produce toxic substances of considerable concern to livestock and poultry producers namely deoxynivalenol T2 toxin and HT2 toxin diacetoxyl scirpinol DAS and xeralanone. Xeralanone is the primary toxin causing infertility, abortion, or other breeding problems, especially in swine. Okay. Xeralanone is heat stable. Now, that's very important because heat stable means that this thing can thrive and survive and not be broken down in temperatures upwards to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. And that means, of course, it can live in the body. And it is found, okay, we're going to point out some very important things here I need you to pay attention to. It is found worldwide in a number of cereal crops, okay, such as maize, barley, oats, wheat, rice, and sorghum. In addition to its actions on the classical estrogen receptors, so it has actions on the classical estrogen receptors, xeralanone has been found to act as an agonist of the GPER uh, receptor. It doesn't say receptor, but that's what the GPER 30 is, is a receptor. Now this GPR, GPER receptor actually lives inside your cells. So let me say that again. If this fungus, this toxic substance, can act on your on the GPR30 receptor, that means it has to be inside your cell in order to do that. So this is a wheat product that is not used by the cell for energy, but it actually gets into the cell and acts on the cellular structure. Okay, and let me show you the proof of that. Now, uh, if you understand anything, just a little bit about biology, you understand that that's really odd. Okay, let's go here. 
and I'll show you where they inadvertently tell you that this gets inside the cell. I mean, they tell you right there because they tell you that it acts as an agonist on the GPR30. If you don't understand biology, you'll, you'll miss that. But let me tell you where it's even more clear. All right. So they tell you what it is here, the GPR30, also known as the G protein coupled receptor, is a protein that in humans is encoded by the GPR gene. It binds to and is activated by the female sex hormone estradiol and is responsible for some of the rapid effects of the estradiol has on cells. Okay, so this is basically the female hormones or the estrogen hormones that are regulated and signaled specifically by receptors in each cell. Okay, so this, this toxin gets into the cells and directly affects the hormonal system, all right, just to make it simple. Now, this is the part I want you to pay attention to. Based on its ability to bind estradiol, GPR30 was renamed as GP protein coupled estrogen receptor, unlike other members of the GPCR family, which reside in the outer membrane of cells. GPER is localized in the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so that is deep inside the cell. Here's the cell, and if you could see number three here, uh, I won't stay. Let me just go to it and show you really quick. Okay, this part here in the cell, which is an integral part of the cell, which regulates all of the hormonal systems. There are many receptors in the cell, but this is deep within the cell. Okay, there should no, there should be um, no way that toxins are getting inside the cells and reprogramming them. Now, foods that have hormones in them, that's different. Okay, that's these are the receptors that do take the particulates from foods, and your body is influenced. Your hormonal system is influenced by them. But when we talk about a toxin being able to infiltrate directly into the cell and affect it, that is a totally different thing. Now, a toxin, no less from a common food. So again, we always need to be on the lookout for these simple things. Okay, again, maize, barley, oats, wheat, rice, and sorghum. You know, a lot of women have problems uh, hormonal problems and men also your estrogen level can be accelerated from eating wheat as a matter of fact let's go here right eight reasons wheat is making you gain now wheat packs on belly fat belly fat in men is directly attributed to an a rise in estrogen all right, now I haven't looked at this article. I just brought it here to let you know that um, these foods, especially wheat, that does, that do affect the body, do affect the hormonal structure. But people know that belly, belly fat is directly affected to uh, estrogen. Okay, here so we just basically see a simple article that shows that as many men age their testosterone levels tend to decrease and they tend to gain more belly fat body fat has an enzyme called aromatase that converts testosterone into estrogens okay so uh, belly fat is a direct result of a loss of testosterone and an increase in estrogen not necessarily because of the increase increase of estrogen because the fact that low testosterone causes more belly fat and the belly fat itself encourages the production of estrogen because the aromatase enzyme 
is in fact that is located around the midsection. Okay, that type of uh, fat that, that is specifically goes to the midsection. So just to uh, remind you, be on the lookout. Be careful with uh, the grains that you eat and uh, always stay in good health. If this information has helped you in any way or you found it valuable, don't hesitate to subscribe. Also, for consultations, go to lessons101store.com, navigate down to the health consultations link, and from there it will take you to our health library page where you can receive a consultation.